Uh, if all you did was sit and watch the three biggest games of the day on the, on the prime spots, you watched some hella exciting football games. <laughs> Just incredible football games. The first one of the day was on Fox, and that was Michigan 42, Ohio State 27. The Wolverines win the game for the first time in, what, nine seasons, I believe? Eight yeah, seasons, whatever it is. Time. And only the second in, like, 16 years. So this was uh, unexpected a little bit. I will say that I had actually picked Ohio State to cover, partly because I thought they were really, really angry about the things that transpired last season. This would be the first time out. And we hadn't really seen Michigan bully anybody. I thought Ohio State was rolling at this point. Uh, I know that you liked Michigan with the points, and it makes perfect sense, right? It makes absolute perfect sense. But, Michigan, but the reason I liked it was because Michigan was only rolling against teams who do not play defense. And when uh, I say Ohio, State, play defense, Ohio State was only rolling. Yeah. Oh, I'd say, yeah. yeah. But th- these are teams that don't have a secondary and really don't get great pass rush. Yeah. yeah. Michigan's not that team. So, C.J. Stroud, the numbers were not bad. 34 out of 49, 394 yards, two touchdowns. The grab late in the game by Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, was incredible. Garrett Wilson had 10 catches, 119. Jackson Smith and Jigba had 11 catches for 127. Uh, Chris Olave, who was supposed to be the best of this group, has has not put up massive numbers. He, he, he did have seven catches for 88 yards, but he hadn't been the go-to. Jackson Smith and Jigba late in this season, he and C.J. Stroud have got an incredible connection. Uh, but none of that stuff mattered. Because Michigan absolutely whipped their ass all over that football field, and it was not even close. This was a men against boys kind of ball game, and watching that Michigan offensive line, I, I had because I listened to this game on my way back into town, and I was able to watch the fourth quarter once I got back. But I went back last night after Bedlam and watched to see exactly what I was, and this was they were pushing. Yep. Complete, on, on both sides of the ball, Michigan's offensive and defensive line were completely better. The Harbaugh quote talking about Ryan Day being born on third base and thinking he hit a triple yep. was... 100% right. Peak Harbaugh, and yes, 100% right. Uh, 100% Ryan Day right. does not have the right to be pissed off about stuff that Harbaugh was bringing up in that conference call last year. Ryan Day hadn't really earned anything yet. He was gifted. It's much the same way that Lincoln Riley was gifted. Yep. The Oklahoma these, job. These are guys that haven't built anything. They got to move into a big-ass house that was fully furnished. Yes. They put none of their personal touches on it at all. Just don't break it. Yes. The The Michigan post-game win expectancy was 99% because, of course, it was. Uh, 41 <laughs> rushes for 297 yards. That is 7.2 yards per rush with six rushing touchdowns for Michigan. Ohio State could not stop them. Those linebackers were so out of their element in this ballgame for Ohio State. Yep. They had no, no idea chance. what to do with these guys. No it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I, the, the, off- the offense for Michigan completely twisted their defense into a pretzel. Yes. Just everything they wanted to do was good. It literally took McNamara giving the ball away a couple of times to even give Ohio State a shot at being close. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, it was unreal. Like, I, that, watching that, I could not believe that that is what was going on. And But Urban Meyer is the one that, that truly built those offensive and defensive lines. You were scared of Ohio State in the trenches because you knew that they were going to bully you, right? And that's it's the same thing with Alabama, with whoever else, right? These big boys, the way that they built the empires, the Death Star, if you will, is that at the line of scrimmage, they had the dudes. And now they and don't have the Clemson, dudes. You look at Clemson, you look at Ohio State, you look at Alabama, they don't. They don't have the dudes, and that is the they problem. Don't. So, And now you go and look at the recruiting rankings, and absolutely, that you're going to see four and five stars up there. Yeah, sure but, you are. But it ain't. These ain't guys the same that opted guys. To, see, this is why this is why I hate recruiting rankings because guys that opted out of going to Alabama or Clemson or Ohio State somehow choose the smaller schools, and then the recruiting ranking drops. I used to be a four star, now I'm a three star. I used to be a five star, now I'm a four star because I didn't choose Alabama and I chose to go to some smaller school. Yeah, hmm. happens all the time. This is why you can't trust recruiting rankings. They're all liars. I don't. They're all, uh, they're all. They're all in the same pot for the same people. I don't. I don't disagree with you. This I don't is, disagree a, with you. When I when I use the word cathedral, 
This is the shit that I'm talking about. Michigan receiving yesterday. Funny stat on this one. They had 190 yards uh, passing. 14 receptions. Nine different guys on 14 receptions. Not a single one of them had more than two. This is this, that was cool. when I said Harbaugh put them in a pretzel, but their defense did not know which way they were getting twisted. They just they couldn't figure out the scheme. They didn't know who to cover, and they didn't have the ability to cover anybody. And McNamara, while making a couple of big mistakes, played a almost perfect game because he just found the open guy every time. Yes. Yes, like, it there, was awesome. There, somebody brought it up in the comments. I've seen it on Twitter. People <clears throat> talking about, you know, well, he's only throwing it 10 yards out. How can you not stop that? Because not everybody's running 10 yards out, and the 10-yard route is always getting open because the person covering that guy keeps keeps leaving him for somebody <laughs> else because they don't know their assignments. Exactly. Which also which does fall on the DC. So so you gotta. If you just put everybody in close, that means somebody deep is going to be wide open, and then you just blew a play. Yeah, I mean it's a, yes, a hundred percent. Do you do you get do you get cut with a fifty cal, you know, going straight through the forehead, or do you get killed by a thousand paper cuts? You know, they both suck, and neither one of them are good ways to die. How uh, how much fun was it to see this in the snow, right? I I, I love had these this snow been games. a two thirty game. You saw the weather, right? Oh, had this yes. been a two thirty game, we get we get the I mean, the perfect game. Big 10 ball game, which we got in Michigan State and Penn State. We'll talk about yeah, that in a little bit. That's right. But, yeah, this was uh, this was fun. I mean, my God, this was fun. Uh, as far as overall team stats, total yardage was not that different. It's just that no. Ohio State had to get all theirs through the air. They got 394 through the air rushing. Ohio State only had 64 yards. With that stable of running backs, they got 64 yards rushing on 30 attempts, 2.1 per, uh, because they were getting whipped. Also... 10 penalties for 66 yards for Ohio State, only two penalties for Michigan. Michigan did have the one turnover early. That was the only turnover yep. in the ball game. It they scored them. on that, which um, gave them the lead. I don't did they score on it? Uh, maybe that was when they got the 3. Maybe it was 0 when they did that. I thought I thought they I thought that got them to 10. I thought they I thought they didn't uh hold on, hold on. Interception. Ah, they did. They got the field goal right after that. They gave okay, a short that's field. when they got their yeah. first score. That's right. Okay. Yeah, so it the fumble, uh, well, uh, sorry, the uh, the interception, of course Ohio State did they fumbled Right afterwards, da, 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 da. and Michigan. Okay, so I forgot about this. AJ Henning fumbled a punt for Michigan, and then it was recovered by Michigan. That's what it was. Okay, okay, okay. I was I was so confused. I was like, why is it saying there's a fumble? These these play by play stats for college football all season have been so jacked up, so jacked up. So it's it's a little crazy. <laughs> Double O'Neill jumped in, by the way. Southern boy here. We don't get no snow in North Carolina, where I'm from, hardly ever. <laughs> hey, same here. We did have a snowstorm last year. When in, well, not last year, but in February, I guess it was. Yeah. That was, uh, it was pretty hardcore. So it, it was about a week straight where we couldn't even, couldn't drive because we don't have snow plows and all that. But yes, the snow game, beautiful, wonderful. And I will tell you, I was so excited for Jim Harbaugh and Seeing God, who's the the basketball coach, Jawan Howard. Yeah, seeing him and Harbaugh celebrating this on After the field, the game on the oh, field, so much rushing. fun. I thought the same thing too. I was like, "Holy crap, Jawan Howard in this game in this crowd, like, get out right there, there on the field, like doing right his there, thing yeah, with him." I yeah. loved it. Loved it. This was so perfectly college football. Like the passion from those fans. I could. I almost couldn't believe because you talk about the the big house. And you're talking about a bunch of old heads, guys that aren't going to be rushing the field and all that. And they were so excited about this win. And they, I got no problem with anybody rushing the field, especially in a situation like this, because they were so excited. There wasn't any extracurricular activity. They weren't going after Ohio State players. It wasn't hatred. It wasn't whatever. It, it was, was joy. just joy. It and was joy. pure, unadulterated joy is what I look for in college football. This was the most fun result of the day because it hasn't been done in so long, and sure. and I can't get over it. I can't get over it. And it's not I, – I don't dislike Ohio State. I don't dislike Michigan. I just love the pageantry. I love the tradition and everything that comes with college football, and this was a perfect ending for what Jim Harbaugh went through last season, taking the pay cut, coming back this season, and and being able to dominate 
in a game that he has never been able to win. He was revamped awesome. that staff last year. Yes. Last year. All young this guys. This entire this entire staff is young and 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 I would use the word inexperienced for the most part. And man, I, they got a couple of transfers. They got a couple of recruits that played early and young. But for the most part, these are the same guys that that have been there for a while. And and they they really did an unbelievable job. At coming into the program and developing. That is the biggest yeah. thing. I think that's Alabama's biggest problem right now is they've got guys that are more adapt to scheming as opposed to developing. But either way, Michigan showed what happens when you develop guys over years. These are all guys that have been there for like three years. It it works sometimes, right? Like yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. So this was a lot of fun to see. Uh cheers to Jim Harbaugh. Cheers to that Michigan program because again, it's been a long time. And now first appearance in the Big Ten title game. And I can't wait for it. Can't wait for and it. I, so they get Iowa now, right? Yes. They definitely get Iowa. Yes. I, I, I cannot imagine. I know that we've seen some weird shit happening. I just, this Iowa team looks. I mean, they're, dead. they're I, with. I can't, but I can't believe, I can't believe they won Saturday. I, like, I, just, I believe that, that Iowa will make it interesting for a little while. But, too. but when it comes by down third, to it, by the end of the third quarter, this thing's going to open up. Yes. And, and it's going to, to, to get ugly. I agree. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.